All right, good morning. We're glad to have you in our service this morning. Uh, welcome to our Christmas uh, musical. Uh, hopefully that you will enjoy it here in a few minutes uh, when uh, we uh, get it uh, going. Um, the uh, choir uh, has been working and uh, wanting to present this to you. As you know, this is a bit of an uh, unusual uh, year with the um, virus that we've had and the problems that we had, but they've worked hard to be able to do this. And so we have some of our members that are out, so they've had to work around. As yesterday, one uh, had to pull out, and we've had one this week had to pull out for, for virus reasons. And so they're, they're working around that. So uh, just bear with them. They're going to make it work. Uh, and uh, Ms. Margaret got thrown in to be the reader at the last minute, so she's, uh, she, she, she was, uh, I'm glad for her. I got called. I was down in Thomasville out eating with the family. Uh, last night and called by Charlie and says, uh, you need to be the reader. And, um, and then he called me back later and said, that's all right, I, I replaced you. I said, that's about the quickest I've ever been replaced. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I was glad, very happy. My, my, my meal went much better then. No, no. I, <laughs> I'm, glad you didn't, I'm glad you didn't know then. So, uh, so uh, Ms. Margaret's going to do that. And so uh, we, we had to work at this, uh, but we've got it, uh, got it together, and so we're, we're looking forward to what God will do in presenting the uh, Christmas story to you uh, this morning in a musical form. Let me give you a few announcements and uh, do uh, our reading, and uh, we'll get uh, to it. Uh, I do encourage you as you go about, uh, take uh, good precautions. We try to take precautions. I know some of our sister churches are shut down this morning uh, because of that. We're going to do everything we can uh, to try to uh, have services. Uh, part of that means for us to do our part. Uh, you do need to social distance, uh, stay within your families as much as possible. Uh, when we leave, try not to huddle up together. Uh, we, we've done a good job. I, rec I commend you of not uh, doing too much handshaking and neck hugging. I know we as Baptists love to do that kind of thing, but for this period of time, we need to be very careful. And so uh, we go outside pretty quickly. We, we're fortunate we've got a large building and we can, we can uh, stay apart. And you've done a good job of that, and that helps us be able to have services. And so uh, thank you so much for, for helping us and to continue. We have stuff outside on the tables to spray your hands with and try to keep in a good, clean environment so that we'll be able to continue to have services. Uh, those that don't need to come, we don't want to put the a mark on you and say something's wrong with you for not coming to church. There's several that don't need to come, and we, we are putting our services out online. So if you want to see any of our services, Dale does an excellent job of, uh, of doing that. And so you can go to our Facebook or YouTube pages, and so far they're allowing us to uh, uh, put them out. And so uh, you can go there and find past sermons and then the sermons that are going on and be able to keep up with our services. Uh, for that. Um, we will start this morning uh, taking up Lottie Moon offering. Lottie Moon is an offering we take up every year, and we've not done a great job on that in the past several years because we've been working on our building and paying for it. Now it's paid for, and we need to return to doing a good job of uh, Lottie Moon. That's is helping, that's what funds our missionaries uh, to do work around the world. And um, we've got missionaries struggling under these uh, circumstances, and so we need to help support them. So we'll have, along with our ushers standing at the back door, we'll have one of them that will be designated for Lottie Moon. We'll try to make sure you know which one as you stand at the back door. So ushers, when we stand, one of y'all stand and collect for the regular church offering. The other one will be the Lottie Moon, and we'll try to make sure folks know that. And, uh, and uh, start taking that up. We'll take it up for the next two or three weeks. Uh, and so... Uh, uh, so that we'll have opportunities to give uh, for our Lottie Moon uh, offering. I encourage you to give and give generously uh, for, that, for that offering, and we'll continue to make announcements of that over the next uh, several weeks. Uh, for tonight, we will uh, have our children's uh, program on tonight, and so we encourage you to come and visit with us. You see some of them sitting right here, and you'll see them in part of the program tonight, and they'll participate some in the program this morning. I think several of them have a, a part to play in the program uh, this morning, or, or some part. And so uh, uh, we encourage you to come tonight. Uh, we are not going to have a fellowship time tonight. Uh, we uh, decided that because of the uh, circumstances around us, we just want to be extra cautious in that. And so um, uh, we will not be having uh, the food part of it. When I say fellowship, Baptists understand what fellowship means. That's the food part. And, but we are going to have a special guest arrive. And so... Um, we will be having him come, so immediately following the children's musical, 
a Santa will be in the back. He will take your last-minute request. Uh, he will check your list and see if you've been naughty or nice, and um, you can uh, make that last-minute request. So uh, that will take place immediately following. So, um, and then um, Wednesday, we're going to do caroling. Caroling is going to be different. As you know, in the past, we've been able to get out on the back of our uh, trailer and go from house to house and do caroling. Uh, not going to be able to do that this year, so we're going to come in here and uh, spread out in our uh, auditorium, and we're going to do some caroling. We're going to do some Christmas carols. We're going to do some fun carols, some jingle bells, and Mama got ran over by a reindeer, and all those uh, fun carols and, um, and the stuff we usually do. And then uh, we're, we will have food and fellowship afterwards. There won't be such a big crowd of us there for that. And so bring your favorite uh, fun food. Uh, snack, and we will have that uh, afterwards. Remember, we have to clean up behind ourselves. Uh, caroling, we're the carolers, that, that's something we do. And so, um, uh, plan on bringing your food and cleaning up behind yourself. And so, uh, we'll be doing that on a Wednesday night. So, we look forward to, to having a fun seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, right with Charlie? All right. Seven o'clock, we're going to be caroling here, and um, we'll have fun set up just right uh, for, for Christmas. Um, for those for the first uh, Sunday morning, which is two Sundays away uh, of the year, we'll be having communion that Sunday morning. The Lord willing, we still able to have services, and I certainly hope that we will. We're having communion, and then the last thing uh, that I have is you see these beautiful flowers, the poinsettias that are sitting around and sitting out front. Uh, these were uh, donated by folks in the church and other folks uh, that have uh, given. If you haven't paid for your flowers, Miss Debbie, I understood, hired some guards to stand at the back door, and you won't be allowed to exit the church until you pay. And um, no, uh, you, uh, uh, if you can, uh, if you haven't paid, uh, pay Miss Debbie or Whitney. And, uh, and uh, if you can't right now, when you can, please do. But anyhow, it's time for flowers to go home. I know for my flowers, they're screaming, no, please don't. Uh, Ms. Margaret has taken good care of them. She says she appreciates Ms. Sandra Jones over the years. She's been the one that's looked after them, and it takes a lot to keep these flowers up and looking pretty. And so, um, but it's time for them to go home. And so if you would take them after service today and take them home with you uh, and give them, a, give them some tender, loving care, we would certainly appreciate that. Also remember, uh, church members, we have the post office box out front. I look for your cards and take them home with you so that um, uh, uh, you uh, uh, ha can have them looked after. All right, let's take our Bibles then and uh, turn to our scripture reading today. It's in Psalms 103. Psalms 103. I want to read for us, and then I'm going to have just a tad, not much, I don't want to overdo you, I know it's Christmas time, but I'm going to do a tad of participatory reading this morning. That's me and Charlie's inside joke, and so um, there's one word in here I want you to repeat with me, it's only a few times in here, so it's not going to get you too hard, and it's the word bless, can you say bless? It'll be on the screens for you if you don't have your Bible. And so when the word bless comes up, I want y'all to say that word with me. It's a few times in the beginning of this passage and a few times at the very end of this passage. So if you found that in your copy of Scripture, if you could stand in honor of the Word of God. And so when this word comes up, if y'all would just say it. So the Scripture starts out, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who oppress, who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, as far as he removed our transgressions from us, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. 
for the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant and those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Brother Roy Powell, will you lead us in prayer? Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for blessing us as we just read the scripture. You have blessed us, Lord, this past year, and we thank you for it. And Lord, we ask our blessing to be upon us in the coming year, Father. We know we've been through quite a year, a different type of year. Lord, a lot of things happen that we're not accustomed to and not used to, but you've helped us and blessed us to get through it, Lord, and we thank you for it. We ask you to bless those that's been mentioned. We pray for Sister Jeanette. Lord, that you'll touch her body and heal her. Make sure you're able to get out of the hospital and they be able to diagnose a problem or take care of a problem, Lord. We just bless her. And Lord, all those that's been mentioned that the preacher read off has got the virus, COVID-19 virus. Lord, we pray that thy blessings be upon them. We pray, Lord, for healing, if it be your will. And we know that some people don't have too much trouble with it, and some get really sick, and Lord, it even takes uh, some of us lives. So we pray, Lord, that you would help us through these times and bless our people, Lord, our doctors and nurses, and the people are in contact daily, Lord, the hospitals and the medical centers. We pray, Lord, you'd bless them. We know that. They have to deal with it, and that's their profession, and we know they don't like it, and Lord, none of us like it, but sometimes we have to do things, Lord, that we don't like. But we would pray that you'd bless in that situation and help the doctors and the nurses, Lord, be free from it, not catch it if it be your will. And we pray for this virus uh, medication, Lord, that they've got coming out that a lot of people are already taking. Lord, we pray that it'll be effective and help people, Lord, to keep from getting it and pray that it'll help people that may have it. Lord, we just ask you to go with us during this last Sunday before Christmas. And Lord, we just thank you for blessing us as we come to this point. We ask you to bless our choir and all those participating today in our service we pray lord that it'll be a blessing and help us to do our part and do it the best we can father thank you for each one that's come thank you for our visitors lord if they call themselves a visitor we pray that you'll make them feel welcome and maybe they'll come back and be with us again we ask you now to go with us through the service and not only this church lord but other churches round about having the same problems in our county and our state and lord our world so we pray for thy blessing to be upon us and help us lord to do the things we need to do and help us to appreciate christmas and really take christmas for what it really is and these things lord we ask in your precious and holy name amen Good morning. Y'all excited? You're not excited? Y'all know what's coming up in a few days? Yeah. 
I'm pretty excited. What? You got a bunch of presents? Little one? You got a little present? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited about Christmas morning. I, I wake up on Christmas morning and it's like uh, being a kid all over again. I'm, I've been waiting for it all year long and all of a sudden it's Christmas Day. And it's time for presents and for food, snacks. Yep, I like red velvet cake. That's one of my favorites. And it's just a wonderful day with family. I get so excited. And one of the things about Christmas morning that is so exciting, y'all, is that we all look forward to Christmas all year long. You know, uh, Irvin has been doing the, three, the day countdown to Christmas on Facebook for about three years now. And I don't know how he keeps up with it and how uh, he, he sticks to it. And every day on Facebook, he says 364 days to Christmas, 363 days to Christmas. And he counts all the way down from 365. And it's, it's always amazing to me. When we, you know, it seems like it'll never come on day 364. It seems like it'll never get here. And then here we are. What, five days? Four or five days? Whichever one it is. Till Christmas. Can you imagine? Y'all know the story of the shepherd standing out in the field when the angels appeared, right? Right before, or when Jesus was born. Let me read this uh, this to you out of Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Now, all the angels, they're standing out in the field watching over their sheep, right? And all of a sudden, an angel appears and says, The angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You know how we wait all year long for Christmas? People had been waiting for thousands of years for Jesus. God had told them a long time ago that He would send a Savior. He had told them a long time ago that He would send a King. And they had been waiting and waiting. And they didn't have Facebook. They didn't have any way of counting it down. They'd just been waiting. And all of a sudden, it's here. That was one heck of a Christmas morning, wasn't it? Wasn't that crazy? Can you imagine the joy? Now, it says they, they were afraid. Fear. So that was the first thing they felt. But after that, can you imagine the joy that the shepherds felt when they realized that what their, their people had been waiting on for thousands of years was finally here? Can you imagine that? Take Christmas morning, multiply it by a million, and that's probably what was going through their minds and their hearts. That's the joy of Christmas. That's the joy, is that mankind had waited for so long, and on that first Christmas morning, it finally got here. He finally came. Isn't that joyous? So now can I ask you, can I say good morning? Good morning. That don't sound joyous. Good morning. We're celebrating Christmas. So, uh-oh, lost my candle. Y'all know we've been lighting the candles, right? Guess what the candle for this morning is? It's the pink one. <laughs> That's right. But it's the candle of joy. It's the candle of joy to remember the joy that first Christmas morning and the joy we, we have every Christmas when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. And then, of course, here in the middle is our candle that represents Christ, the Christ candle. And we're going to light it in honor of Jesus and the fact that He came and He was born on that first Christmas morning and lived in this world and died on the cross for our sins. He came for us. All right, let's say a prayer and let's thank God for the joy of Jesus. Our dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for this time of year. And God, we celebrate your birth year around, Lord. We, we're so happy that you came for us, God. But Lord, this time of year when our nation and the world has decided to put aside to celebrate your birthday, God, we, we especially think about the joy of that first Christmas, Lord, that Mankind, you had been promising us for so long that you were going to send a Savior. and You were going to send a King, Lord. And that first Christmas morning, it was here. Lord, He was here. You came for us. God, thank you for the joy that you put in our hearts, Lord. Let us show that joy to everyone around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all stay in your seats.
Hundreds of years ago, before angels sang to the shepherds, before wise men followed that shining star, God spoke to his people through the prophets, men who were well-known and honored, who instilled the hope of a Savior coming to answer their cries. Isaiah 59.9 tells us, We look for the light, but we find darkness. We look for brightness, but we walk in blackness. Approximately 700 years had passed since Isaiah had proclaimed that there was coming one who would console those who mourn in Zion. In Isaiah 7, Scripture foretold, The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel. Until the Son of God appear, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou rod of Jesse free thine own from Satan's tyranny from depths of hell thy people save and give them victory o'er the grave rejoice Come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night. Death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. As the time of the promise approached, 
God brought a simple carpenter and his betrothed wife to Bethlehem in order to fulfill his plan. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went from Galilee out to the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Sweet little Jesus boy Born in a manger Sweet little holy child We didn't know who you were Long time ago it seems you were born, born in a manger, Lord, sweet little Jesus boy. Didn't know you come to save us all, to take our sins away. Our eyes were blind, we did not see. We didn't know who you were. You have shown us how, and we are trying. Master, you have shown us how, even as you were dying. This world treats you mean, Lord, Treats me mean too But that's how things are done down here We didn't know it was you Didn't know you'd come to save us all To take our sins away Our eyes were blind, we did not see We didn't know who you were. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. The Savior had come. His name is Jesus. Today we call him by many names, Emmanuel, God with us, Redeemer, Messiah, Most High, the Holy One. Oh 
when Christ was born. Truly he taught us to love one another. His love and his gospel is peace. Shall he break for the Savior's our brother? And in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus praise we let all within us praise his holy name Christ is the Lord oh praise his name So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds looked at each other and said, Let's go now to Bethlehem to see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. The shepherds rushed to find the new king. They were the first to worship Jesus in that lowly stable, but they were not the only ones preparing to meet the king. In a faraway land, wealthy, educated men were looking for to the heavens and they saw the star that announced the coming king. Recognizing the sign, they knew that they must find him, offer their treasures to him and worship him.
they had seen him, they made widely known the sayings which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. The angel's announcement of an unexpected pregnancy had changed Mary's world. But holding this little one in her arms cast away any worry, any doubt or fear, and it sent it far from her mind and thoughts. Luke recounts for us that after the shepherds left, Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. In the silence of the night, Mary snuggled her newborn son close to her heart and hummed a quiet lullaby. Yeah. 
John 1.14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as the only begotten Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. The birth of the Savior came only, came only, can only result in praise. Over and over again we hear the story. Angels rejoice, shepherds rejoice, and for centuries we have continued to rejoice about his birth. And he is the one we worship today.
God's people had waited a long time for the promised king. After 400 years of silence, it was not a warrior king, but the cry of a tiny baby that was announced that heaven had sent help. For those of us who have trusted in that Savior, our greatest privilege and joy is to know him more, to trust him more, to worship him more. He is our King of kings and Lord of lords. We invite you today to come to the manger and meet the Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. Come and see him. Believe that he is the hope of the world. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Be filled today and every day. Hope is his name. Peace is his name. Joy is his name. His name is Jesus.